Making your game art in tiles can be beneficial in a lot of ways. Because tiles are so modular, tile maps make it easy to create new levels and modify existing ones. Some good examples of games that utilize tile maps really well are of course classics like Mario and Pokemon, but also a lot of newer indie games like Spelunky and Stardew Valley take advantage of this art style. So in this video we'll have a look at how to use Unity's built-in tile map system. Also a special thanks to Judiman, Befio, Infinity PBR, Yorai Omer and Hans Hoftoon for their support on Patreon. And with that, let's get started! So I just opened up Unity and currently we have nothing in here. But in order to start creating tile maps, we need to have a tile set. I went online and found this pretty cool tile set by Leonard Pappin. As you can see, there are a bunch of different elements like rocks, dirt, grass and water. And if we have a look at the ground tiles only, this is what we see. Of course, if you want to learn how to create your own tile sets, I have a tutorial on how to do that in Photoshop. But there are really a bunch of tiles in here and there are even multiple tile sets for the different elements in the scene. So just to keep things simple for this tutorial, I've gone ahead and created a simpler version of the tile set and I'll of course have a download link for that in the description. Let's take this file and import it into Unity. Let's click on it and you can see here I've just selected the most basic ones. Now first we want to make sure the texture type is set to sprite 2D and UI. We'll then change the sprite mode from single to multiple because we have multiple sprites in here. We'll also change the pixels per unit to 32. The reason why is that the size of each tile in my tile map is 32 and I want one tile to be one unit big. Then because we're dealing with pixel art we want to set the filter mode to point so it doesn't get blurred out. And we can also go down here and disable compression. Now if we apply these settings, we can open up the sprite editor and here we want to define each individual tile. Luckily we don't have to do all this by hand, we can simply use the slice option up here, change from automatic to grid by cell size because we know the size of each tile. That's of course 32 by 32 units with no offset and no padding and we can just go ahead and hit slice. And you can see it actually automatically registers all of our tiles. I definitely recommend you go through and see if everything is here. It certainly looks like it. With that we can simply hit apply and if we now close down our sprite editor, we can drop down this menu on our object and here we have each individual tile as a sprite. So next what we want to do is create a tile map. To do that we go to the hierarchy, right click, go to the object and select tile map. And you can see it automatically creates this object called a grid. That's because all tile maps in Unity are rendered using a grid. So if we go to the scene view, we can see all of the grid lines. And of course, in each of these grid cells, we can now place tiles. If you've ever used the UI system, think of the grid just like a UI canvas. We can of course configure stuff like cell size and gap here, but in most cases, you probably just want to leave those be. Then we can expand this object and under here we have our tile map. Now you can consider a tile map in Unity kind of like a layer. If we want multiple tiles on top of each other, we simply want to create multiple tile maps that we can draw onto. So this here is our first tile map layer. And so we can call it something like tile map underscore base. Just to let ourselves know what we want to paint onto here. And our tile map has two components, a tile map, which has configurations for the layer, and a tile map renderer, where you can configure stuff like what material to use. But we just want to leave all that by default and instead we want to go window and bring up our tile palette. And this window is where we find all of our tile painting tools. We can go ahead and dock this to the right of our scene view and maybe also give it a bit more space. Now as you can see we have a bunch of different tools at the top. I'm going to show you what each of these do in a second. First we want to create a palette. And a palette is basically just a collection of tiles that you can choose from at any given time. So we want to go ahead and create a new palette and we'll call this palette something like ground tiles. We just want it to be a rectangular grid and we'll set the cell size to automatic and now we can hit create. Now each palette is stored as an object in your project. So we could go and create a new folder here for all of our palettes. So I'm going to call this palettes and we can go into the folder and hit select. And there we go, we now have an object in here called ground tiles. And you can also see it's selected right here. And in fact it already tells you what to do. Drag tile, sprite or sprite texture as it's here in order to add them. So we can go to our tile set example and select each one of our sprites. And then simply drag them into our tile palette. Now Unity is going to generate a tile asset for each sprite. And since we have quite a few sprites, this means quite a few assets. 
So we probably want to go ahead and create a subfolder for this. We can call it tiles. And just to stay very organized, inside of this, we'll create another folder called ground tiles. Let's hit select. And Unity will go through and generate all of the appropriate tile assets. And as soon as it's done, we should see all of them in our tile palette. You can also see on the left hand side here that if we go under our tiles folder and under ground tiles, all of our tile assets are here. And if we select one of them, we can either change the sprite that the tile asset uses, we can tint it a certain color or mess with the collider type. But again, for now, we'll just leave all of those as is. And this is where we get to the most annoying part of using tiles using the current tile system. Because you'll notice that our tiles are laid out in a very chaotic way. So now we're actually ready to start painting using our tiles. To do this, I want to switch to the brush mode. The shortcut for this is of course B. And now we can start selecting tiles inside of our tile map. So say we want to select the corner right here and then simply move our mouse into the scene view in order to start placing these. You can also select multiple tiles if you want to paint more at a time. So I'm going to start painting away on a tiny level. You'll notice if I switch to the game view now, I have these weird ugly lines. The reason why is we need to go to edit project settings and then quality. And in here, we'll make sure to disable anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is meant to blur out edges in three-dimensional graphics. But since we want very hard edges here in order to not see between the tile maps, we definitely want to have this disabled. So I've laid the foundation of my tile map here and I want to move it kind of into the vicinity of my camera. So I'll take the selection tool, select the entire tile map, select the move tool and then move it over. Some other tools that are handy is if you're using the brush tool and want to erase, we can simply hold down shift in order to do that. We can also select the box tool. Using this, we can fill a rectangular part of the map. You can also select a tile by using the mark tool. I normally just use this by holding down control and picking the tile that I would like to paint with. And finally, we can use the bucket tool, the one on the far right by hitting G, and this will fill out holes using the selected tile. So I think I'm gonna paint some water into my scene here. I'll see you in a second. And I'm also going to surround it with some grass. So now I'm satisfied with the base of my tile map, but I definitely want to overlay some objects on top of this. I especially want to add some rocky parts to my level. And you'll notice if I just select this and start painting on top of what I've already made, it looks really weird. And the reason why is that parts of these tile maps here are transparent. So we need the base layer to still be underneath. Luckily, we know that each tile map act as a layer. So all we need to do is go into our grid, right click, go into 2D and create another tile map. And we can now rename it to tile map underscore rock. We also want to make sure to set the order in layer for this to be greater so that all of the tiles that we paint appear on top. I'm just going to set it to one. You can of course also put it on a separate sorting layer. Now we'll switch to our tile palette. We still want to paint using our ground tiles, but we want to change the active tile map from tile map base to tile map rock. And now if we switch to the brush tool, you can see that we can easily start painting away with these rock sprites. There we go. So finally, I'll just take my camera here and zoom it out a tiny bit so we can see more of the level. And we've now created our first level using tile maps in Unity. Of course, there's still so much you can add to this, but as a base, that looks awesome. So other than the stuff that Unity has currently built into the editor, they've also created a bunch of tile map features which aren't yet integrated. And you can actually find these on the Unity GitHub under 2D Extras. I'll of course have a link for this in the description. If you want to use these yourself, simply hit clone or download and you can download it as a zip file and open it right up in Unity. In fact, they also have another repository called 2D Tech Demos. I'll have a link for this as well. And this includes all the extra features along with example scenes. So if there's something you want to learn how to do, you can check out how Unity recommends you to do it. So that's pretty cool. And let me just go ahead and show you what some of this stuff is. So I've opened up the 2D tech demos and I've created an empty palette here. And if I now go to the project and right click, I can go into create. And I still have an option called tile here, but at the very bottom, I also have options for animated tiles, pipeline tiles, random tiles, and a bunch of others. Let's just try out the animated tile. 
We'll call this one waterfall base. And this of course allows us to create tiles with animation. So in here we can define the number of animated sprites that you want to have in your animation. Let's set this to five and now we get five sprite slots. Let's take the first one here. Let's search for waterfall. Let's select the first one here. Let's go through and do that until we've selected all of them. All zero through four here. And the rest of the settings we can leave as is. If we now drag this into the tile palette, you can see that nothing really happens. But if we then take our paintbrush and make sure to create a tile map over here in the hierarchy. So right click to the object tile map. We can select our waterfall and paint it into our scene. And if we now hit play, you can see our waterfall animating. Of course, it's currently doing so really slowly. To change that, we can go under grid, under the tile map and change the animation frame rate. Let's bump this up to something like 15. And now when we hit play, we have an animating waterfall. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one and rename it to waterfall foam. And I'm gonna go through each sprite here and change it to the bottom of the waterfall. So there we go. We can now drag this into our tile map as well. Select our brush tool, select it inside of our tile palette and suddenly we can paint with it. If we now hit play, we can see that we've added a waterfall to our game. And this is just one example of the extra features. Another one is the ability to set up rule based tiles. If we go into the scene view and erase what we have, we can instead change our palette to one of the included ones. Here I'm gonna go under terrain tiles. I'm gonna select one of the tiles in our terrain here and I'm simply going to start painting. And you can see automatically Unity recognizes what tiles are nearby and inserts the appropriate one. Of course, we could do all of this by hand, but having a simple system like this just makes everything much, much quicker. And if we go inside of our tile map folder under tiles and terrain tile, we can open up the example scene for this to see how Unity has laid this out. And we can also go under tile assets and select one of the assets. And here you can see all of the different sprites that make up this asset. So the left here are rules. In other words, how the tile should be designed and to the right here, we specify a sprite that is designed in this way. So we have a filled one. We have one with three sides. We have one with two sides and a corner. We have one with just two adjacent sides, two opposite sides, and so on. If you want to set this up yourself, you of course need to create all the appropriate sprites. In that case, I would definitely recommend basing it off of the sprites that you need to have created for this example. So that should definitely be enough to get you started. And if you're hungry for more features, just check out the Unity GitHub repos. There are some nice hidden gems there. That's pretty much it for this video. If you want to learn how to create your own tile sets, I have a tutorial on how to do that in Photoshop that you can check out. Also, if you like these videos and want to support them, you can do so over at Patreon. With Patreon, you can make a recurring donation to help us keep making videos. You can go to patreon.com slash to learn more. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Time map is a wrap. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January, and a special thanks to Dine Guyan, Diego Geik, Judaman, Amin Arusi, Yorai Omer, Befio, Infinity PPR, Hans Haftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Benny, Double Tap 45, Murr, Beard or Die, Cole Cabral, John Burigard, Superman the Great, James P, Thomas Wally, Jason Latito, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Bjorn Fudu Knapp, Suni Jakobsen, Erasmus, Rob Fan, James Rogers, Alex Rukitsky, and Robert Bund. You guys rock.